So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end. As per Yerushiahu the prophet, we find layers of understanding of the Spring Feast, the Aurum Feast, and also the returning of the cities of the Messiah laid the waste for many centuries. As we read then Yerushiahu the prophet, we always make a reference of this prophet because he is so important, because though he was aware of the Holy Torah or the instructions, he was also saying many prophecies of the future and also during his time, the restoration period, the birth of the Messiah, his thousand years of reign, and then the thousand years of deceit, the autumn feast, and also post-autumn feast. So it's a very extremely important prophet. The question is, why then Israel destroyed this prophet? This truly is a question we should ask ourselves any time we place ourselves in a position of enjoying somebody else's revelation, or then a person is simply trying to enjoy himself or herself in a situation where then they can gather the information that they think they can do on their own. So then, because of these, let's make an evaluation of what Yohanan did as far as mikvahing or baptizing. Now, there are a few words where you can find either from the regular Bible, the Greco-Roman translation, or you can read the Tzayelic lineage scripture and then find information also. So then, let's try to understand this very properly. We are not speaking of repetitious situation and buy our way up to heaven. Neither should we then not read the holy instruction and make ourselves as ostriches and placing our heads in the dirt thinking that there is no problem. Neither should we read the holy instructions and revelations and try to make others who were then far away more knowledgeable in their own ways and try then simply to adopt new revelations with their own lifestyles and try to manipulate the future for their own benefit and benefit of others. Let's then evaluate what went on with Yahanan when he was baptizing or mikvahing. Now, we try not to be repetitious, neither using words that confuses. Baptizing and mikvahing are equivalent. Should we use one versus the other? It probably would be the best to use the original languages, words, so then you become familiar with it. But then the meaning obviously won't change. As you understand baptizing, then when you are reading next time, we'll try to remind yourself mikvahing. But the fact is, a person then goes down the water and returns. No big secret. So then, let's evaluate what went on. Then Yohanan is explaining a situation where he was then obviously involved with the Messiah for a long time. And then, he explains a factor very interesting because... Yohanan was baptizing, or he was mikvahing the people, so then they should repent of their sins. The Messiah has said, if a people is not, or person is not born of water and of the Spirit, then cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so then, obviously when a person becomes knowledgeable of the holy instructions, and they come to the knowledge of the truth, then they have to be baptized, or then mikvah. And afterwards, then comes the understanding of Ruach HaKodesh, and they begin to search the instructions and the Torah as the basis, and then later on they read the prophets, 
and then they link up with the times and the seasons and then the holy Moadim, Leviticus and then the teachings of the completion of the spring feast and preparing ourselves then for the autumn feast now when the people they hear obviously they want to make an adaptation and instantly they want to make a name for themselves it is absolutely incredible how fast and how easy it is for a person to take new revelations and adapt for themselves and try to make money out of it or try to gain some sort of a favor there are people that have very limited knowledge of the holy instructions yet they have a great influence either because they are linked very closely with the God of this age and far away from the Creator himself and only doing what is repetitious so then, not try to point the fingers at anybody. But the point is, when a person receives an understanding or revelations from the most unlikely person, then there is a light that comes to the situation and they use it instantly for their own benefit. It is absolutely incredible. So let's try to understand what Yohanan was. Obviously, Yohanan was rejected by the people of the law of his time. And he was. Yohanan was a person that was born for a specific purpose, pointing the way for the Messiah. And he was rejected by his people. And the Creator himself has said, you stay out there in a wild and then eat what then the land can give you including locusts and drink from then the stream and remain there don't come to the city because these people are dirty however Yohanan had an anointing and this anointing could not be taken from him and people they tried, they tried, and they tried, and they tried and for many years he was baptizing the people indicating the coming of the Messiah and then later on the people of the law had taken notice of this guy and they were envious it is absolutely amazing, a person can stay in a congregation for 50 years and then become envious you know, the 50 years under your belt can do a lot of damage in your mind. But let's try to understand what went on. Then he was saying, obviously the Messiah himself was involved. Now this is the judgment, because the light has come into the world and man had loved evil more than the light for their works are evil for everyone who does not or does hate the light of the world then does not come to the light so he's only making a reference of the evil of the world he was speaking obviously also of the people of the law more so because they knew the instructions and they were using for their own benefit always to gain more money more prestige more favor they want to have some sort of a, those links that can make them easier than to do the work whatsoever it takes even if they have to crush someone else is to get what they have in order to make their lives in the future easier boy they do it But let's verify the situation from where the truth is coming from. Because it requires an anointing. And the anointing you can get from any person. Let's evaluate then what Yohanan is saying. So then, but he who does then truthful, obviously comes to the light that they be obviously known that this person then obviously was done via Elohim try to understand Elohim as plural 
And after these situations, then, the Messiah and his people came to the land of Yehuda, and there he would remain, and was then obviously involved with the people being baptized, or mikvat. Now, Yahanan was also mikvahing or baptizing in Ayon, and of the, it is on the sign of Shalim, because there was plentiful water there, and they were coming to him, and they were being baptized. Very simple. Then let's understand the rest of it. For Yahanan had not yet come into prison, and a question had arisen amongst the situation regarding them purification. As we understand, you know, the people of the law, they are very caught up with traditions and they try to purify themselves and using water and many kinds of rituals. And then one of his disciples, the disciples of Yohanan, then came a certain Yehudan. And they came to Yohanan and said to him, Our master then who has then a knowledge of you, and then watching Yohan and then baptizing, then this person start baptizing the other people. So let's then make a retrospect of the whole situation. Yohan is there, he has an anointing. Ever since from the, his mother's womb, he had an anointing. And his objective was then pointing the way on behalf of the Messiah. This was his objective, and he was in a wild because he was not received at the city. He was constantly fighting against the people of the law, so that's why then he was outside. But he had the anointing. So lots of people were coming to him because he had the anointing of pointing the coming of the Messiah. People were recognizing their sins and they were being baptized. Then there was a wooden over there, a person of the law. He was watching then Yahana for quite some time and then was producing results. So what went on then? This person from the law began to baptize other people trying to take the position of Yahanan. To understand how these thieves they work, they get a bit of knowledge from somebody else and they try to steal for themselves. Obviously, to make a name for themselves, and then to make, in quote, a bridge from where they are, they are at, and then to make it easier for them to go to the other side. Even if it has to take to put somebody else's life on the line, oh boy, they do it. But the problem is, they have no anointing. So then, let's make an evaluation what it takes to get, for instance, a congregation going. It's not the person doing, it's not others helping, it's not another person going overseas, neither doing documentation. The people of the law, they had the knowledge. The people of the law, they had the influence. The people of the law, they had, obviously, the people mixed up with them. Yet, what they were doing wasn't working. Then, Yahan, that was an outsider, was bringing another perspective of the situation based from the anointing that was given him. And then others trying to copy. And what was then the response of Yahan? And he said, Pfft, these people are trying to do it on his own. So let's then verify what Yahana has said. Then he said, Yahana answered and said, Man is not able to receive from his own, except when it's given from heaven. You find it is the third chapter of John or Yahanan. So then, it is very easy sometimes when God puts together a group of people 
and there is an anointing that goes on because each person should be circumspect what to do and what to say in placing the tongue under the control. Now many people don't do this. They want to forward themselves in becoming important and they can use any person that stands on a way and they try to crush it as much as they can. And if this means placing this person on the line for their behalf, boy, they do it. The problem is there is not an anointing. So when God puts people together, each person should be circumspect what to do, what to say. So then the whole situation becomes then nicely in the hands of the Creator Himself. Yohanan was there baptizing and then afterwards came the people of the law and one of them they, they tried to steal what Yohanan was doing. And Yohanan said, this person has no anointing from heaven. What it means is the act of baptizing does not have then fruit coming out of it. So then, when the people they gather together and they gain knowledge, let's make sure then what is given is at no charge. How many times then the Messiah himself taught his people and he said then, at no charge you have received and at no charge you must give. You know, when people don't understand this principle because where they are at, sometimes people don't have no teachings of their own. They are always listening and going and doing. But they want to become part of it. They sense that there is a lack of this specific anointing to do. And people want to become independent yet enjoying the moment. Be important for what God is doing. Isn't that amazing? How many congregations and churches there are around? And if you observe the amount of knowledge that these people can have as far as combining the Torah, the prophets, the writings, completion of the spring feast, and then the autumn feast, Yet, you encounter a lot of troubles. Sometimes it's because of nationality of the person. Could be. But the situation is, when we read, you can observe very intently when people they begin to discover they want to do on their own. It's not of a situation of people coming together and each of them making the adjustments. No, no. It is the person that gains the knowledge you want to become important before the others. Do you understand the distinction? Do you understand the evil of the situation? These people, they gather from somebody else's knowledge and then it wants to become right on the front. The problem is, they jump to the front, and when they open their mouth, there is not anointing. They become like a clinging symbols. And rather than becoming anointed, the people become then annoying. So let's make sure we don't find ourselves doing what Yahana had pointed out. What has to be done must come from above. And when a person speaks, there is a silence, so then what is said is important and always brings the Torah, the instructions and the prophets 
gives them then the forward motion. Some people can stand it because the evil is in them. They want to take this precious knowledge to use for their own. They want to forward themselves. And they want to become higher than the others. And when they open their mouth, being right up front, then has no anointing. It doesn't cause the changes of what then Yahanan was speaking of. So then, people they make deals. However, evil people they make deals with names of somebody else because they have no anointing in themselves when they speak. Try to understand, they place other names on the line because they themselves, when they speak, they have no anointing. So they cling to get from somebody else and then they reject in order to become forward of themselves. That's why then Yahana was saying, Psh, that person over there baptizing has to come from heaven. And obviously, the person doing this was mixed up with a purification. So then he would try to use what Yahana was then saying and doing and baptizing. He was trying to get the anointing for himself in order to become nicely received amongst his own people of the law of his circle. You understand why then Yahanan said it is truly ridiculous this person has no anointing from heaven. That's why then God himself said you stay over there in the wild and you eat locust over there and drink from the stream and stay out there. Because if you try to get in the midst of these people in the city you are going to become contaminated as they are. And they won't produce any fruit. However, when you speak like this, speaking of Yahanan, of the Messiah, people who do repetitious things, they don't like to hear it. Because they don't want to make changes in their lives. You know, they have done this for decades, the same repetitious situation, the same names, the same teachings every time. So they get used to it. But then when the boat begins to rock, as then Yahana was rocking the boats of the people of the law, then people get mad, they get angry. Because it's not only talking of the Torah. It's not only reading the Torah. It's not only saying the names properly of the Torah. It is doing this, plus reading the prophets in the writings and what the Messiah has said, also what the disciples did, and then the spring feast and the autumn feast. The whole situation must be completed. If these people of the law, they are only trying to do the repetitious situations without what the Messiah has said, then there is no anointing in it. There are only repetitious and repetitious and repetitious and repetitious. The Buddha congregation is the same songs every time. Reading is very basic. And then the expounding of very short phrases sometimes or verses, it becomes very lengthy. And you know what? Then the Messiah is neglected. The very time where the Messiah should be then expounded 
the teachings of the Mashiach based from the Torah, from, you know, the prophets, from the writings. And then the people, they have a tendency of only reading the Torah and they neglect the Mashiach. The Mashiach is the completion of the Torah. So then, how can these people make a name for themselves? Because they repeat so much, then any kind of new understanding, then they want to make a name for themselves because they are starving. They are starving from what the Mashiach has said as the completion of half of the Torah. If a person is going to do this and start up another congregation with the same level of repetitious ways of reading, having someone else then lend a person then some sort of a magazine, some sort of a manual, and then reading from it, and repeating the same things over and over again, reading a portion of the Torah and then expounding to the ways of reaching then another planet. Yet they neglect of speaking of the Mashiach. Where did a person go with it? Is that simply another congregation being born? Now, how many people would become hurt if someone new comes in with the anointing and trying to make sure there is a balance from these both and then, oh boy, then this person should never teach, it should never mention because a person is so new in the congregation. What about those people who are 10, 20 years already in it? Yet they are involved with the same repetitious situations every time. And then comes the criticism. You know, oh, this person never went, you know, to the uh, proper teachings, and, you know, never went to a learning session, and, you know, never did this, then the other, never went to Israel. And how come a person has so much knowledge of it? The same criticizers that were criticizing Yohanan because he was in the wild, was the same person that came near to him and tried to do what he was doing. And then Yohanan said, this person has no anointing from heaven. They have only the repetitious things that they do every time in traditions of the law and so on and so forth. And what the, this person is doing is not lasting. When we speak of the Torah, it's not a situation of interpretations. It is related with personalities. Now, we should retain our own personality. The Torah for being the Torah, Torah is sounds redundant, but if you understand it from a viewpoint of making a Torah in a person equal, then the person becomes dispersonalized. There was a reason why Peter or then Shimon were so hot-headed. There was a reason why Yohanan was so kind. And then some of them were acting another way. There is a reason why. God does not dispersonalize a person. Now when a person is so repetitious, and so repetitious, and so repetitious, and then when they are on their own, they, they are linked with the world, drinking and carousing and going to feasts and swearing. What does it do? 
Because let's be frank. It's truly ridiculous for a person then to go to a synagogue or in a congregation. It's over there in teaching, you know, the lots of repetitious things. And then turns around and go to drink. It defeats the purpose. But those who are led by God, they must understand either a person is firm or a person is not. Now, can a person understand certain situations and receive an anointing? It depends upon God. Now, for a person every time reading the Torah in a certain way, or because it's Genesis or Bereshit, and then a section of, you know, either the life of Yaakov and then the sons, understandable. But comes a time where they are making a name for themselves based from the patriarchs, and by the time they have to talk of the Messiah, they don't do it. The Messiah is the very person in the center of the whole Torah that should be spoken of, and he is neglected. So people are then reading and repetitioning and repetitioning and repetitioning to make a name for themselves. They are desperately hungry and starving to make the Torah something for themselves so then they can be worthy. Where only the Messiah can substitute this void with himself. But then people have to speak of him. Should a person speak of him and then sin? Should a person not to speak of him and speak of the Torah and then sin? There is a balance. So this is what we should be concerned. There is nothing more disgusting than every time hearing the same things. So in one side you have the people of the law reading the Torah, reading, 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 and then repeating and repeating and repeating. Yet they turn around and they go and drink. And they carouse around. And then on the other side they speak of the Messiah in such a way Wonderful. And they turn around and they scandalize themselves. They drink, they carouse. So we should have both properly set so then the Messiah is honored. Don't we read then Revelation, for instance, or Galah, then the Messiah was highly exalted because of what he has done? And most of the time we go to congregations, we barely hear of him. Now, if we combine both of them, should a person try to control other people? Far away from it. Because people, they have personalities. How are you going to control someone else's personality? Can a person become a telephone pole of reading the Torah so much? And then a person becomes nearly a zombie of the Torah. You know, we have to think of these because there are people that know the Torah so much and if you talk to them, sometimes they don't talk back. Either they are so inflated of themselves or they are so prideful or they are considered an elite of some sort. Let 
me, she has said, go around the world and form holy cities and then obviously exercise the seven functions. While the cities are not yet set up as per the instructions, then our duty is then speaking with people. Pointing out these situations and not dispersonalizing the, per the person or the people. They learned the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, and the works of the Messiah and the Shalishim, or then the apostles, but they are not dispersonalized. Next time I'm going to evaluate the situation more because truly must have a very healthy balance of this entire situation. So please stay tuned, much more coming up.